<laughs> Hello, yeah. Wrong and oh, April Fool's Day. Were you the fool today or was someone else the fool today? The best April Fool's that I've ever been involved in was at Rock FM quite a few years ago where we broadcast that the QE2 was coming up the river in Preston. People actually turned out for that one. No, the QE2 was never going to be in Preston, of course. Now, to today's Where's Wally? Princess Catherine. Where is Wally? The reason I ask that is because it, there was a no-show for Princess Catherine at the Easter Sunday church service at Windsor with the, the, the King Charles, the Queen and the rest of the royal family. Why no show? Because we were told via the mainstream press that she'd had a jaunty day out at Windsor Farm Shop and was carrying bags back to the castle or wherever she was staying at that particular point. She was fit enough to have a jaunt around Windsor Farm Shop in her gym gear. Well, leggings, kind of. Could have been gym gear. So what's going on? If she was fit enough to go to the farm shop, why wasn't she fit enough to join the king and the queen and the rest of the royal family yesterday at Windsor Castle for the Easter Sunday church service, which is one of the most important church services of the year? Now, today, King Charles is all over the papers, but not a single mention of Catherine, Princess of Wales. Where is Wally? And with hindsight, were the things that were printed in the mainstream media fake or real? We were told she was fit enough. Why not for yesterday? And why is she not returning to the royal fold, if you wish, until April 27th? Easter? Important. Not important enough, seemingly. What else are we going to talk about? Oh, Dan Wooden. Dan Wooden's resurfaced. Obviously, you're very well aware of that. But Dan Wooden has announced he has agreed to advise Ofcom, the gatekeepers. He's agreed to advise Ofcom as its new freelance publications editor. Whilst he says he does not believe the organisation should exist, he hopes to balance its bias against the conservative media. What will he do when GB News gets another complaint? And is this an example of poacher turned gamekeeper? I'll leave you to comment in the comments below. Uh, that's taken my breath away for a bank holiday Monday. Is it an April Fool's? It's from Dan Wotton's Twitter account. Is he going to come out and go, oh, jolly jape, jolly jape. No, 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 it's just winding you up. Are we, are we, is April Fool's applicable in 2024? Is it something that we go, oh, that was funny. Yes, that was funny. Like Domino's deciding that they're going to sell frozen pizza from supermarkets. April Fool's, are they worthy? anymore or do we just go oh stuff yo man we've had enough and then Bibi Netanyahu sorry Benjamin President Benjamin Netanyahu not necessarily uh, a, a newsworthy story today I don't think but he's having a hernia operation that's full under the knife that's full not out um, general anaesthetic but whilst he's under the knife Thousands of Israelis are demonstrating on the streets of cities in Israel. Why are they not demonstrating while he's not in hospital? Or is it because the press are thinking, well, we can say whatever he wants. He's under the knife. He's having a hernia. He's having a pop back in. There's been demonstrations in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Haifa, all three cities that I've been to, all three cities that are beautiful and I love, um, especially Haifa. Demo is calling for him to stand down. I don't think he's going to be doing any standing for the next uh, wee while. The excuses have run out for Netanyahu. Um, he's sort of a war president, so while there's a war going on, he can just stay there for as long as he wants. So if he perpetuates this war that's going on, he can stay president for as long as he wants, until he kind of falls off his perch. We do wish him well. We do not... 
want anyone to suffer. Gazans, Netanyahu, anyone. Because we don't want any suffering any longer. This is 2024. We've had great wars. We've had skirmishes. We, the Great British Isles, have been involved in theatres of war every decade for the last hundred years. Bibi Netanyahu, you know they say that the pen is mightier than the sword? Well, here's my take on it. Bibi has run out of road and should succumb to the will of the Israeli people. Now, there is something that I'm sure is sort of sticking in his in his throat. Bibi Netanyahu, he's no Ben-Gurion, is he? Ben-Gurion. There are airports, eventually a canal named after him. Ben-Gurion. Bibi Netanyahu's not going to be Ben-Gurion by a long stretch. And that will forever rankle with him. Yeah, Roman. Uh, as well as that, I, I just want to, um, we'll talk about, if you've got four million quid, how you can spend it. But I just, there's a, a column inches in today's press around Metropolitan Police. And anybody is just taking every opportunity to stick it to. Whether you want Police Scotland, oh, today's a big day for Police Scotland. I uh, hope they're going to issue a load of overtime for all the hate crimes they're now going to record. Uh, but the Metropolitan Police, well, an officer yesterday, um, struggled. And I'm going to lay out for you why people struggle because the mainstream media and as you can tell i'm not a fan the mainstream media keep getting it wrong and wrong and wrong so if you keep telling if you repeat a lie often enough people will think it's a truth now i can't show you this because technically it would be a hate crime but demonstrators over the over the weekend were displaying a Nazi Hackenkreuz. What do you mean, what's that? They were displaying it on a pro-Palestinian march over the weekend in London. Now, what you weren't being told was those people displaying a Nazi Hackenkreuz were arrested. It is a hate crime. Quite rightly, they were arrested. And as I say, I was going to show you the difference between a swastika and a Nazi Hackenkreuz. Because what you're told is a Nazi swastika, swastika, however you pronounce it, it's wrong. It's not. It's a Nazi Hackenkreuz. But if they keep putting that in the press, people will go, what does that mean? It's German. What does that mean? But it's still a hate crime in these septed isles. Now, it's actually a Hindu swastika. Or swastika. It's Hindu, not German or Nazi, Hindu. Now, if you've got a right facing swastika, it means prosperity and good luck. It's ancient, more ancient than the appropriation from that far right wing party in Germany. If it's a left facing sauvastika, it symbolizes night or tantric aspects of Kali. I'm giving you this detail so that you have some kind of understanding. Why do I want you to get to understanding? Because the press are telling you wrongly what it is. It is not a Nazi swastika. Wrong, 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 wrong. It is a Nazi Hackenkreuz. But... They just call it something because maybe that's what people know it as. No, I don't. I know it as a Hindu swastika that's mightily ancient. Now, because you don't know what I'm talking about, how would a metropolitan police officer know when almost everybody daily gets it wrong? It's not German. It's Hindu. And finally, Esther, 
Uh, you better get down the back of the sofa, see how many 10p pieces you can find, or 50p pieces, if there is such a thing anymore, now that we've gone virtually all electronic. Muhammad Ali's Thriller in Manila shorts. Don't know who's got them, but they're hoping to make 4 million quid at auction. I think you better start looking for that uh, rattling coin down the back of your sofa. I think I've got about £1.35 I can offer you. My name's Adrian Allen. Thank you for your likes. Don't forget to make sure you are subscribed for more videos. But most of all, thank you for your indulgence. My name's Adrian Allen. Don't forget the Battenberg.